So Mike Burnt, who teaches at Davisville Middle School in Rhode Island, he sent me a really nice donation as a thank you for helping him teach his students about 3D printing. So I offered up this episode just for his students and they sent me three files and I get to choose which one. See which one I chose for this week's Filament Friday. The first suggestion was a clip-on phone holder, the second one this universal arm mount, and the third one a catapult. I had to choose this. Now it loaded as one complete file, not individuals. So I loaded into Simplify 3D, upsized it by 20% because I'm going to print this on my DaVinci 1.0. I printed at a 40% fill, a 0.2 layer height, and then I sent it through the USB from my Simplify 3D right to my DaVinci. It can control my DaVinci printer. And here it is in time lapse. So here's the finished pieces fresh off the printer. I got some real rough edges to clean up because I really squished these down on the bed. And that was probably a mistake. I probably squished them too much. but. They came out pretty good, and the uh, flipper goes on here. Well, actually, one of these posts go, or offsets go on there, and then the flipper, and then the other po the other spacer. And then this gets glued on in place on top of that, and just to show you, here's a finished unit with the rubber band installed. So you just pull it back, and I'll let her go. The only thing I don't like is I wanted to shoot some quarters. And this little groove or whatever is on the end of this thing is just, it's too small. Look at the quarter just won't stay. I want to modify this and make it bigger so I can put a quarter inside this thing and it'll stay. So back to Tinkercad. So I went back to Simplify 3D and it's got this feature that it can separate connected parts. So you click on that and now all the pieces are individually selectable. So I can go back and now click on the arm and it'll highlight it right here. And then I can go File, Export Models to STL. So I can export it as a single STL file and save it. Now I can bring that file into Tinkercad and there it is, just the arm. So the next thing I did was brought in a cylinder because now I want to make the shape of a quarter. Well, slightly bigger. So I made it 25 millimeters in diameter and 2 millimeters tall. And then I made this into a hole so I could take away space on the arm. But before I did that, I had to line these guys up. So I used the align tool so they're aligned in a level position. Now I move the arm into the coin and that way it's going to take away material. But I couldn't tell how deep I was going here so I decided to reverse them. Make the coin solid and the arm hollow. And there was a little corner there was too close, so I moved the arm a little bit away. And then everything looked good, so I reversed it. I made the coin hollow, and then the arm solid, and then I grouped them together. And that formed a new slot that would fit the quarter. So I downloaded the .stl file and decided to print it on my DaVinci Junior. Now Davisville Middle School has a lot of the same printers I do, so this was a good mixture. So I upsized it by 20% in XYZWare. And then I sliced it at a 25% fill and a 0.3 layer height. And it said it was going to print really quick. And it actually did. So I sliced it and then sent it to my DaVinci Junior through the SD card. And it printed beautifully. And from there, it was ready to assemble. Okay, so here's the new piece. And I had to gouge this out a little bit because I didn't use supports. But it wasn't too bad. And now holds a quarter nicely. So I think this is going to work. So I just need to take this one apart, pull this flipper out, put this one in its place, put the spacer back on, and now I'm just going to use some acetone and glue these together. Because these are, these are ABS so I can acetone those. This is PLA. So I can't do that, which is fine, because I don't want that glued anyway. So I'll acetone these together, and then we'll try this out. So here's the finished unit with the new flipper in place. Now putting the rubber band in is a little bit of a challenge. Um, you might have to clean out these holes. But what I did is I took a real small flat screwdriver. So 
So I put it on the end of a screwdriver and just kind of pushed it through like that. And then you just bring the arm up, put the rubber band around it, and then the other side. I should center that a little more. And there we have it. And it'll fit a quarter. So now I can play Angry Yoda. That's it. That's Filament Friday for this week. A special thank you to Michael Burnt and his whole Davisville Middle School class. I'm going to send this out to you guys as a thank you. Your support is very much appreciated. Now I've got two left. I got a smaller one I printed on the Da Vinci Junior and a larger one without the quarter slot. So at the end of the month, I'm going to pick one of my subscribers. And they're going to get this. And then I'm going to draw a second one, and they're going to get this. At the end of 2015, I hit my first reward level on Patreon. So everyone that's on Patreon, and I'm going to go to the end of this month, is going to get a special print. And it's this guy right here, although I'm going to add some stuff to it. Well, it's upside down. This is actually a hole gauge that I made a long time ago, and I use it all the time. It's got... 3D printed holes with the dimensions embossed on the bottom of it. And so if I have a 3 millimeter bolt, I can slip it in these holes and find out that even though it's 3 millimeter bolts, I need a 4.5 millimeter hole for it to fit because of all the shrinkage and everything like that. And I'll put like a nice thank you or logo on it for everyone that supported me on Patreon. So still a chance to get one of these. You have to be a member by the end of the month. In addition to that, everyone on Patreon will also be entered into a drawing for one of these. It's a pocket hole jig. I use it all the time. It's a very handy tool. I showed this on Filament Friday several videos ago. And so what I'm going to do is for every dollar you contribute, you get an entry. So there's people that give more than a dollar and they're going to get more entries. And then also for every month that you were part of Patreon, you get an extra entry. So the longer you've been on and the more you give, the more entries you get to get one of these. And what I'm going to start doing is because I appreciate my Patreon supporters so much and they make what's going on here happen. They buy the plastics and you know when I need to repair one of these guys, the, the parts and, and the, just the cost of this to give out really these free videos is coming from my Patreon supporters, so they deserve it. So um, every month I'm going to do a drawing just like this for something decent, not just uh, something simple. And maybe I'll try to do more like this if this works, because I learned this from uh, Joel Telling, the uh, 3D printing nerd. He gives away stuff and people just love it, and so he suggested I should do this. And I'll tell you what, there's some channels I just want to recommend. Joe Tellings, 3D Printing Nerd, check him out. Uh, Angus over at Maker Muse, great guy. Check him out, check out his channel. And uh, Anthony at The Hot End. He's kind of a, a smaller and up-and-coming YouTube channel. It's like the four of us, have, we've been talking at different times. It's, it's almost like we're forming a 3D print network, you know, a virtual network. Um, it's kind of cool. But... Uh, if you subscribe to me, check out their channels. You'll probably like to subscribe to them, too. It's uh, highly recommended. So that's it. That's all I got for now. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe and get yourself entered in the contest. So that's it for now. I'll see you next time.